With Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, we've been seeing a rather interesting shift in how Kawaki is being portrayed in the story. At the end of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, he was being built up as this potential final boss persona where even Naruto couldn't say anything when it was stated that Kawaki was the strongest person in the village and that the best thing that they could do was make Kawaki feel as if Naruto's safety wasn't in jeopardy or else Kawaki might be an unstoppable force they couldn't deal with. It wasn't until we got introduced to Dan and we saw him body Kawaki that we knew that Shikamaru's assessment it was a little bit off because Damon was the new top dog in the land of fire but as we saw with Kawaki's character the more he got pushed into a corner the more dangerous he became and it led to omnipotent Shinjutsu being casted after Kawaki sealed away Naruto and Hinata. In the blink of an eye the roles of Boruto and Kawaki they were reversed and everyone with a handful of exceptions they had their memories of the two altered. The boy who saved the village from Momoshiki, it was now Kawaki, and the boy who was the ungrateful brat who ran away from Kara and was adopted by Naruto and Hinata, that boy was now Boruto. Left had become right, down had become up a hero had now become a villain. However, with Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, while it's becoming a monthly meme to see Kawaki getting folded or getting off guarded, one thing that hasn't been discussed enough is the fact that we're beginning the process of Kawaki being pushed into another corner and when he truly feels trapped, the story is about to explode. Join me in today's newest Naruto Explained video where we discuss why Kawaki is on the precipice of blowing up and why for as big as the threat that the Shinju are, an emotional Emotionally triggered Kawaki is one nightmare that everyone in the land of fire needs to be worried about. Also, if you haven't already checked out the chapter review for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 8, you're really going to want to check that one out because the editor on that video did an amazing job, tried out some new things with the edit, and has continued raising the quality that you see on the Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter Reviews, which are paid for by the people over on Patreon that you see at the end of every video without their help. So the quality you've been seeing with the Boruto 2 Blue Vortex chapter reviews, the honest truth about Naruto character videos, the versus battles, the ranking videos, none of that stuff would not be possible without the Patreon support. So with Kawaki, there are signs that there's a meltdown coming for his character, and it's been perfectly buried into the narrative of the story, which has so much going on that it's easy to forget what's being set up in the story itself. Yet when Kawaki eventually erupts into an explosion, a lot of fans will go back to the handful of lines that were sprinkled into the story, warning that for as many lines as Kawaki crossed near the end of Boruto and Arts Next Generations, this next time he's going to raise things even further. When he felt that there was no choice but to protect Naruto, he made the right call with Boruto's blessing to kill Boruto, who purposely suppressed Momoshiki and allowed Kawaki to kill him, even if it went against Naruto's wishes. It was something, but it was a necessary requirement, and it was also him keeping the promise to a brother to free him of the karma no matter the cost. When he sensed Momoshiki was still inside of Boruto and saw that Boruto was lying to his face about it, keeping something a secret is just as good as a lie in a scenario like this. It led to Kawaki going to Naruto's house and telling him exactly what it is he was about to do which is he was going to kill Boruto then he was going to kill Coat then he's going to destroy the Tentails. And as he sealed Naruto Hinata away, he told Naruto if at the end he still wants to kill him, then Kawaki wouldn't resist. When that decision resulted in Kawaki being on the run because the people in Konoha rightfully thought that he killed the Hokage and his wife since their chakra signatures vanished without an explanation, Kawaki eventually triggered the omnipotence and it resulted in Kawaki taking advantage of the situation to use his newfound position as Naruto's son to tell everyone that Boruto killed Naruto. It led to Boruto of being alone, save for his mentor guiding him, and when said mentor, even up until the moment he was defeated, still had no memory of Boruto being his rightful student. It resulted in Boruto getting hunted down, and it led to us getting the setup for the next explosion for Kawaki. He's being set up to go off, and whereas the narrative has shown us that Boruto is the seemingly nigh unstoppable force Kawaki he's looked vulnerable a claw grime albeit one with a Rinnegan got him off guard and he needed to use the Kama seal and ninja tech in order to take it down Miski not only got him off guard but he even said it during the battle with Boruto that he took out Kawaki because he was certain Kawaki couldn't kill this version of Boruto when Boruto showed up in the village he treated Kawaki like a side quest and he wasn't bothered about fighting him Shikamaru warned Kawaki not to attack Boruto alone. 
even if he had Delta helping. While we as the audience know he was basically working Kawaki to buy time for Boruto, to Kawaki that was yet another sign of someone telling him, hey bro, you ain't him, you can't defeat Boruto, which is only adding fuel to his fire. When Jura showed up in the village, he wasn't able to defeat Hidari and Jura, and Jura one-shot this dude, putting Kawaki to sleep for the second time in three chapters where Kawaki woke up and realized that dream of him hugging Naruto, that was just a dream. He's been taking back-to-back -back L's, but there were other clues for Kawaki exploding in the future. Damon openly pressed his buttons to the point where Ada was trying to get Damon to back off because of how upset Kawaki was getting. Damon warned him, you've been lying for three years now. What happens when these Shinju, they pull up looking for Naruto? While nobody will believe traitors like Boruto and Sasuke, they are going to question why outsiders think Naruto is alive. And when this blows up in your face, I'm going to grab one of these milk cartons, I'm going to eat some animal crackers, I'm going to sit in my sister's lap, and I'm going to laugh at you getting what's coming to you because she might care about you, but dude, I don't care at all. I'm paraphrasing what Damon said here, but that's essentially the tone for it. Boruto in the narrative wants Shikamaru that the only reason he hasn't gone right to Kawaki, hit him with a Rasengan respect me combo, is because the last thing he or anyone else needs to do is make Kawaki feel like he's being pushed into a corner. It's something that ironically, a lot of fans, they still haven't grasped because there are still those out there questioning why doesn't Boruto just throw hands with Kawaki and resolve things now? Because Boruto beating down Kawaki right now only makes the situation worse and more volatile. The same way if Naruto were to beat down Sasuke to Orochimaru's hideout, which obviously that never would have happened because Orochimaru did confirm for us that Four Tails rampaging Naruto at that point in the story was still much weaker than Sasuke and Orochimaru is a reliable narrator in that instance. But the point is, had Naruto somehow gotten the Zuku Midoriya power up and he bodied Sasuke, it would have made Sasuke's hate for the Leaf Village that much more intense and he would have inevitably found out the truth about Itachi. He'd be on more of a villain arc than ever before, reaching a whole different level of hate. Boruto is wisely attempting to avoid that entire situation with Kawaki right now, and it's for that reason. If he were scared that he can't protect Naruto and it led to him sealing away Naruto, what do you think he's gonna do when he realizes he can't beat Boruto? The very person Kawaki sealed Naruto away to protect him from, because again, even if Momoshiki can't resurrect using Boruto's body, he can still hijack Boruto's body if his chakra drops too low. Think of it like basically what you saw when Boruto fought against Boro and when Boruto fought against Code, Momoshiki hijacked before eventually giving the keys back over to Boruto's body. Momoshiki can still do that. He just can't come back to life using Boruto. Given how strong Boruto's gotten, it raises the fear for someone like Kawaki and it makes him even more desperate. Now, when you add in the Shinju, you have more of the same issue, being so powerful that Kawaki is once again staring down the barrel of a gun and he isn't able to protect Naruto, he sees that now. And these people, they are specifically hunting down Naruto. Then you still have code out there for whatever that's worth. For Kawaki, the walls are closing in on him and it's leading to Kawaki potentially going down the nuclear option, whatever that might entail. That could be Kawaki potentially getting desperate enough that he recreates the conditions for omnipotence and uses it again for some other desire. Say if he wanted to have everyone that knows the truth about Boruto drop dead, Omnipotence could do that, which I doubt that's something he would do, but he likely has been told by Ada how Omnipotence works because she got told by Boruto and she likely would have told that to Kawaki. But here's the thing, desperate people, they do desperate things, even if they are illogical about it. Could this be setting the stage for Kawaki getting desperate enough to say nuke the entire village in an effort to destroy the Shinju and Boruto and whoever else might know about it? And use that fallout to place more blame on Boruto to raise the urgency to kill Boruto? Since Boruto wouldn't fight at full power against former comrades and other shinobi from other nations, and if he's already exhausted, it'd be him recreating the failed attempt to kill him at the end of part one, where the wind condition was much lower due to those reasons. Again, it's illogical, but the thing about desperate people is they are illogical. There is no logic to it, just as the same way that love itself is illogical. The point is, is that Kawaki right now, he is in a corner and he's being backed further and further into it. His pride right now, it is severely wounded. He is getting angrier with each moment of humiliation that he's faced. 
we see it visibly as the story continues. There is a monster being stirred awake inside of Kawaki, and when that monster finally fully comes out, it's going to shake up the story because that is how Kawaki's been used ever since he's been introduced. Kawaki is a needle mover. You can hate and detest what the character's doing right now. That's the whole point of the character, but at the end of the day, he is a needle mover. In the flash forward sequence, he shook up the story because everyone wanted to know who is this kid? What did he do to Naruto? Why does it look like he destroyed the Hidden Leaf Village? How did things get this bad? The story rolled on those questions through that boring ass recap that nobody asked for from board to the movie, which had already been released on digital media at that point. There was no need for it. I'll forever die on the hill for it. However, here's the thing. When Kawaki debuted at the end of the OW arc, the question shifted very quickly to, how does this kid who's so enamored with Naruto and looks up to Naruto and he treats Boruto like a brother, how does this guy turn on them and how does he destroy the village? I think Kawaki didn't do any of these things. There's no way he would betray Naruto and we eventually got the answer at the end of Boruto part one to the answer to the first question. He did betray Naruto. He did try to kill Boruto. We were all being set up to get to that moment. Kawaki's the whole reason that Kar ended up coming to Konoha and all those engagements that you got, Naruto versus Delta, Naruto and Sasuke versus Jigen, the battle with Boro, the battle with Ishiki, it was all because of Kawaki. Kawaki was the one that Code was locked in on, first for revenge and then it was a part of his treaty with Ada. Kawaki shook the story up again when he reawakened the coma seal and he killed Boruto. He shook the story up again by sealing away Naruto and causing Ada to use omnipotence. Kawaki has consistently been a needle mover in the story to shake things up. Same way that for a lot of Naruto's story, while Naruto was the main character, so much of the story itself shift it into different gears and move forward because of who? Sasuke Uchiha. From the threat of Orochimaru, he was the one who Sasuke was being chased after for unknown reasons. Search for Tsunade art. It started out getting a replacement for Hiruzen, but then Naruto's motivation shifted to needing Tsunade to heal Sasuke, and we saw that whole Sasuke and Itachi angle. With the Sasuke retrieval arc, it was about stopping Sasuke from joining Orochimaru to a point where even the Akatsuki brought it up at their meeting at the end of part one of the manga, saying that this was bad news. Orochimaru now had someone with the Sharingan helping him. One of the larger subplots for the first half of part two was stopping Orochimaru from getting Sasuke's body, and then the second half of the story, one of the needle mover moments was Sasuke learning the truth about Itachi and how those actions changed so much of the narrative from the attack on Killer B and the ramifications to Five Kage Summit to him showing up with the Hokage to change the shift in battle in the fourth ninja war to him openly plotting rebellion against the five ninja nations after Kage was defeated and he was going to kill Naruto, force the nine biju to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, kill the nine biju, and then he was going to rule as a dictator. We're seeing Kawaki being used in a very similar vein and given Kawaki has already been showing us that he's crossing a mega line via the omnipotence and sealing Naruto away. The next escalation is going to have to be something major to justify the buildup that we've been getting with this character. I don't think we're quite there yet in terms of Kawaki snapping per se. I think we're still a handful of key events away before he hits that breaking point. But I do wonder, how do you guys see Kawaki going when he does finally explode? How do you think this is gonna affect his character? Because we have to ask ourselves a very important question. Kawaki being set up for the kind of plot twist that we got at the end of the last Chainsaw Man manga chapter, which you can learn about by clicking the link on the screen to watch my chapter review.